Welcome to our monthly marketing planning series. Each month we bring you tips and activities to help traders develop and enhance their digital footprints. Even if you don't have a website, there's options available to increase the awareness of your business and bring consumers to your store at the market. We welcome Peter Topping, a digital marketing expert and SBMS mentor, who's going to talk through one of my favourite sources for brand awareness. So thank you, Peter, for coming along and uh, I'll pass over to you. Thank you very much, Madeline. So uh, for those of you um, who haven't met before, I'll apologise in advance. I've chosen the wrong shirt for the internet. After 20 years of working in digital marketing, I should actually know better, but it wasn't until we turned on the test that we realised that I was flashing on and off. So um, if, I'm, uh, if I'm annoying any of you out there, I'm sorry for my uh, poor choice of fabric today. Uh, it is something that we all should know about. Um, given the number of Zoom meetings we did during COVID. Um, but uh, it escaped my brain this morning <laughs> when I uh, slipped on a small checked shirt that flashes on and off. So apologies if it's annoying. Try to just ignore me and focus on the content. Um, thank you very much for inviting me, Madeline. Uh, Madeline and I share a passion for the same topic that we're about to talk about today. And, uh, and, and many of you would have heard of us talking about it before, but I would urge you to try and have a deep breath and re-engage with the topic because it is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by sharing my screen and, um, and, uh, and beginning the presentation. So, oh, we've just it's got to move us around so I can actually start the presentation. Okay, so basically as part of the monthly uh, monthly uh, sessions, we always try and cover a different topic each month and we generally have a format whereby we talk, give a quick summary of last month and we also um, give a, a, a quick overview of what's happening in the Trader Bulletin because part of the commitment that QVM made to having these series with SBMS is the fact that um, they also made a commitment and started to try and have a better presence online and help market traders, facilitate market traders' uh, social activities by providing them with the difficult social media content. So, oops, I've just gone forward about nine slides. So, um, in this particular uh, trader bulletin at the moment, there's plenty of things going on. We've got the Rockabilly Retro Market. I don't know if you were around last time, but it caused a massive traffic jam all around the top end of the market. It was enormously successful. Uh, it was um, it was a really busy day for traders at the top end of the market in particular, which was really nice to see, and it got a whole list of new people into the market. The Soul Sundays have continued. We just had one last weekend. Um, they're bringing a lot of people uh, to the market who wouldn't normally be at the market. We're seeing the tarot readers and holistic practices and things like that, and some of the alternative healthcare products. So we're getting a new segment of people into the market, and that's going to continue. Um, the other sort of thing, if if you're looking for social media content and that's not really your bag, um, the market set up the coffee recycling uh, stations around the market. Everybody loves coffee, even if they don't drink coffee, it's an iconic kind of Melbourne product. Um, so it's a great little item, download the image, tell your clients about it. It's just a nice piece of communication tool, which says that the market values sustainability, um, they're on top of what's going on, and it's not necessarily product related and you're not necessarily communicating about trying to sell anything you know, to your clients, you're just communicating a value. There's also in the same Traders Bulletin, the Lord Mayor's Award, that's also along. And some of those people that are in the Lord Mayor's Awards have got interesting uh, sites. So there's plenty of content which is not salesy, and there's plenty of content which is interesting that you can recycle into your social media as usually the quality of the images is really good. You can click in the Trader Bulletin, download the image, and that image will format perfectly on Facebook, it'll format perfectly on Instagram, it'll format perfectly in an e -news, EEM newsletter or uh, on a website blog post. Um, so there's plenty of content together in the market at the moment. The Dizzy Deals is still there, and I've urged people time and time again to get into the Dizzy Deals. Um, you know, for me, the standout was uh, Mushroom Corner and the $4 capsicums. There was people crowded down the aisle getting $4, $4 capsicums when their 
up to fourteen dollars a kilo in the supermarkets. It's so, been a very, um, a very good um, program, and uh, we really need to support it as traders, so that QVM can continue doing this on, um, you know, in the, in the future. If if they don't get enough. Um, support, then it, there's no point having something running that's only got two uh, businesses um, on the, you know, running this program on a Thursday. So there's opportunity to get rid of um, your excess stock. Um, and it doesn't have to be food related. So just get get rid of your soaps or or or. Um, you know, some stationery or whatever product you've got that you've got too much of, this is the, the, the time that you can use to um, get rid of that stock. Yeah, and especially for fashion labels, a lot of people's content arrived from, you know, because of the shipping crisis from, uh, from China and Southeast Asia very, very late, and so they missed the season. So you, you, you can't ever recover that in terms of, you know, it's never going to be spring 2021 or 2022 again. Um, so, you know, you either get rid of the content that you've got uh, and and try and offload it. And the Dizzy Deals is a great way to do that. So if you have got inventory, especially if you think that inventory is perishable, even if it's fashion, this is a great way to try and get rid of and offload some of that inventory now um, before spring comes around again and before we get into the Christmas cycle. I know I bang on about Christmas. But um, the Christmas cycle starts in five weeks from now. In five weeks, it's September. In five weeks, you've got until the end of school holidays to clear your inventory and to start looking at your spring and your Christmas inventory. So if you've got stuff sitting on the shelf in your storage lockers, the Dizzy Deals is the way to get rid of it. Uh, just in terms of other content that we were talking about prior to coming online, just a quick reminder that the winter night market is still going to go to the 31st of August. And then we've got something called the Europa night market, which is going to run in spring. And you can uh, you can have a quick look at that uh, to trade a pack online. There's a great little PDF that supports that. Um, With there's, that. Uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of events that have been happening and um, will, will continue to happen. And those events have been bringing in some very, very good foot traffic, as has the uh, winter night market. You know, you, you, you're you seeing people, you know, numbers like uh, 30,000 to 45,000 coming through, although it's pretty hectic. It's, it's also been very good for the traders. Uh, the weekend events have been valuable to uh, the traders as well with uh, increased foot traffic. So as we go along, we're going to continue to see events happening. Um, I know that there's a lot of uh, renewal programs going um, and, and changes to, to the market. So, um, you know, keeping those events going will continue to bring the traffic through. There's also the new marketing co-op program that has been released uh, for this financial year. I, I just want to mention there, if you are intending to have something made up, if you're intending to have signage or bags or logo or uh, business cards made up and you're expecting support from us um, with uh, the interns when we have them, available please don't wait until the last minute our students are working in at intervals of three months during that time they're working for multiple traders so it's important during their three months that um, they get the work in and that the work is finalized while they're on the program otherwise then we have to start and wait until the next lot of students are in and that could take months so it's up to you to be the driver of this. And if you need our support, we're here to help. So, you know, just uh, send me uh, an email um, or give me a call and I'll certainly um, be very happy to help you with that. At this very stage, we've got a few graphic designers on board who are uh, available and um, I want to keep them busy. So if you've got something in particular you need done, please get in touch with me. And just to support that, that, that it does include signage. And during the market um, redevelopment with the disruption where people are moving from store to store, signage is really important, especially to your past clients who are looking for you. Um, it, and there is very strict rules around signage, signage in the heritage overlay. 
they're really easy to design around um, but it's a great opportunity to include signage and it's a really important factor of being found in the market especially if you're in one of the sheds that you're not normally in um, the redevelopment's taking as long as it's going to take and we may as well live with it and signage is a great opportunity it, it doesn't go out of fashion it's always useful and there's an opportunity to um, have some of that to, that expense covered by the market so I'd encourage people to 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 engage in it so just coming back to the program last month we talked about GA4 which is Google Analytics 4 it's a really big change that Google has made as always you know you can, they are hard to keep up with but it was a change for the right intentions they've got they wanted to fix tracking problems over multiple devices um, they wanted to bring together the quality of their data in a, in a more sort of uh, integrated fashion and they wanted to reposition analytics as a tool to help e-commerce productivity and sales. So that all the intention was correct. They told us a really long way in advance that they were going to do it and they issued tutorials and there was lots of stuff available online and the day was 01 July. If you didn't do it by 01 July, then it was a bit of a challenge, right? And partly it was a bit of a challenge because all of the videos and support contents were about what to do before the 1st of July. So we have had success in helping a couple of uh, traders who haven't done it, one on Shopify, one on WordPress. Um, basically, they were customized appointments arranged by Madeline, and they took about 90 minutes to get through and work out how to connect our platform, um, you know, Shopify or, or, or WordPress, back to the Google Analytics platform so we could track our expense and see what our conversions were and make sure that we had consistency of data over the years. So it is possible you haven't missed out it's really a persistence issue and you know it, it it took us about an hour and a half if you get stuck and you want some help then you need to make an appointment to see a mentor and we can work that through the new analytics is interesting and it is fun we need to know how much it's costing us to get clients and where those clients are coming from and uh, that sort of leads me neatly into uh, where clients come from and their importance and what we're going to talk about this week. There was a, an animation issued this week, which is basically shows how the market share of web browsers has changed over the last 28 years. You can follow the link through the presentation, but um, I've just screenshot the last date, which is March 2022. So March 2022 shows us that Google Chrome has 80.3% of market share. So it doesn't matter what device you're on, right? You can be on a Huawei, you can be on an Apple, you can be on a, you know, an Apple iPhone, you can be on a Nokia, you can be on a Google Pixel phone. It doesn't matter what your phone is, right? Or your computer is. 80.3% of the people in the world's engagement with the digital world occurs through Google Chrome, owned by Google. And Google Chrome likes Google Analytics. Google Chrome likes Google Tag Manager. Google Chrome likes Google My Business. Google Chrome prefers to look at its own products, right? And it advantages its companies that are online that comply with its rules. So whether you like them or not doesn't really matter. They've got an 80% market share. And if you look at Safari, it's only 3.7%. I thought it would be a lot more because of the number of people with iPhones. But remember, this is globally. So in Australia, it's probably slightly higher because people can afford Macs and we've got you know more iPhone users but it tells you a little bit about the power of Google and if you want to know a little bit about how much has that's that's changed um, Microsoft which is now edge their Internet Explorer program used to have a 90% market share so Microsoft as a company used to have 90% of control over what people saw um, you know through which window they were using onto the internet and they didn't really think it was valuable in those days because digital commerce hadn't really come around. Now, I think they'd probably think it was a little bit different. So it's just to show you the power of compliance and why, where you, why you should test your product on Google Chrome and don't spend so much time testing it on Firefox and Edge and Safari and things like that. Sure, it's great if it works on an iPhone, but the main thing to do is check and test your site on Google Chrome. So this week, we're going to talk about an oldie but a goldie, right? And that is Google My Business. Anyone who's had anything to do with Katia, Madeline, David, me, or any of the other mentors would have heard us go on and on and on about it, right? We do bang on about it. And the reason we bang on about it 
is that there isn't any Thompson's directory anymore. There isn't white pages and the yellow pages anymore that people are using in the same scale that they used to use. Every house used to have a stack of three or four of them, right? Businesses used to have business directories, right? Now it's all online. And the Google My Business site is the cornerstone of that digital presence. With 83% of the market, if you don't have one, you're going to be disadvantaged, yeah? And nothing's forever. Netscape used to have 90% of the market, so did IE Chrome. But right now, in 2022, the big guy is Google Chrome. So if you use someone's using a search engine, if you've got a Google My Business site, you're going to be at your best chance of the customer finding you. Okay, now, if you do have a Google My Business site or you don't, there's two questions. If not, why not, right? And if you don't, get one. Okay, if you have got a Google My Business site, when did you last update it? Right, have you moved in the market because of the renovations? Have you changed your phone number? Have you changed your email address? Has your website changed? Have you dropped your Instagram account? Have you got an Instagram account? Have you changed your Facebook page? Are all your details up to date, right? Because ha and also, have you got the latest um, photos, product photos up there? Mm. Yeah. So, so you don't check it, but Google checks it, they go and have a look at it and see how up to date it is. And they give you a ranking based on that, right? So if you have got one, I'd like to know when you updated it. In conversations with people in the market over the last week, right, preparing for this, the answer is two years ago when it was done by a student. That's quite a long time ago, right? You wouldn't not service your car for two years. It's one of your principal customer acquisition tools. So you do need to look at it more than once every two years. And a number of traders have said to me, yep, I haven't looked at it since the student set it up. And I said, do you know how to get into it? And the answer was no. Okay, it's a source of great information. And, um, and it does need a refresh. So I'm urging you to do that. So um, just to kind of tell you why it's important, what I did is I did a search for knitwear at the Queen Vic Market. Okay, just a normal Google search for Queen Vic Market. And what I got was this. So Danny's knitwear comes up really, really well. It gets the number one result. It's got 71 reviews, 4.9, sheer wool, cozy possum. Um, there is loads more people who are at the market, as you can see from the number of dots that are all around there. But actually, they don't get to have a, a, a top three view. And this is why having a good Google My Business site is valuable. You've got only three bits of real estate there. And the more competitive the genre of your business, the more important those three stops that, uh, that those three places become, and the more important the pictures become um, that go with them and the reviews. So Danny's got 71 reviews. The reason he's probably 4.9 and not 5 is that by the time you get more than 50 reviews, you're always going to get one complaint. You're always going to get, even if 100 people give you, give you uh, uh, five stars, there's always going to be two who give you one or two because something happened, they weren't happy, they were kept waiting too long. There's always something. So by the time you get up around the 50 review marks, your chance of having a five star in decreases, 4.8, 4.9, because there's always going to be a couple of people who aren't happy or who, you know, who, who don't like you for some reason. And so, a score of uh, a score of 4.5 plus is a good score. Uh, you know, when you're getting over the 50 review mark. Absolutely, 100%. Now, the key thing to learn from this, the key takeaway, is the more places link, right? The drop-off, depending on the type of business you're in, is between 90 and 97%, right? That means 90 to 97% of people don't click on the more link. They just look at the top three results, right? unless they're looking for you and they're patients. So that is absolute gold. Having that real estate is really important and it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. It costs you a bit of time. Okay, so when you actually log in, you want you look at a detailed result, if it appears down the side of the page, what does it actually tell you? It tells you all the important things you need to know about any topic, who, what, when, where, how, what the quality is, what the contact is, what the product is, right? It gives the customer all of that information. They can find you, they can see you, they've got an eyeball on you. If they want to call you, they can call you. They know what your hours are. They know where to find you. It's really, really great things. And they also give a range down the bottom of other things that were looked for. 
So it helps people put it in a bit of context. What's most important to us as digital marketers that it gives us is validation. Okay, and that comes in two halves. If a client isn't sure about you, it pre-qualifies them. They go on here and they go, oh yeah, it's in the market, I've got the right place. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, look at all the reviews. Lots of people have said nice things about it. I think I'll go there because the reviews are a proxy for quality of customer service and product. And um, if I want to check out the social media or I want to have a look in more details, I can do that. I can also send the directions directly to my phone. If you're a client who's already made the decision, it validates their decision to for the decision that they've made, right? It gives it helps to draw them into the commitment. They've gone, yeah, I've, I've looked online, I'll go to Cozy Possum, right? And they look at the Cozy Possum result and they go, oh yeah, it's got really nice reviews, I've made a good decision. And it's open, this is where it is. And when I'm walking around the market, this is what it looks like. I know I'm looking for a store that looks roughly like this. So it's a really important tool. Forget whether you've got a website or not, right? This is this is way ahead of that. Forget whether you've got an Instagram account and you've got Pinterest and all of that kind of stuff. This is way further up the importance list, right? Because they're probably, if they come here, they might go to some of your accounts downstream, right? But this is a validation tool. It will help get the waverers in and it will help in make sure the people who've decided they want to come and find your product come to your site, right? So I do think it's important. And as I said before, Madeline's banged on about it, I banged on about it, the students have banged on about it, and before that, Cassia banged on about it, and we all like to sort of nag everyone about it, but it's nagging for exactly the right reasons. It's important. Um, so, if you've got, if you haven't got one, like I said, it's really, really easy. Google have got to follow the bouncing ball mechanism. What you need to do is prepare by having your logo, having some photos, having all the details of your business, making sure you know the name of your social media accounts and uh, and what store you're going to be in and what days you're going to be there, right? So you just have to, the more prepared you are in advance, the easier it is to follow. So it's basically a bouncing ball. It says edit your direct edit your entry in the directory directly in, in Google. So you just hit next, you fill out the details, you hit next and, uh, and, and Google will help you build a listing. Then it takes a couple of days to come through after that, right? So it, it's it's not necessarily instant. You can sometimes see everything within a couple of hours, but often there's a bit of a uh, bit of validation that, that that requires, right? Once you've done version one and you show up, it's really important that you go through and read it and make sure you haven't made a mistake. One of the key mistakes that I've just fixed this week is the client's phone number. They put in zero four one nine, right? But they actually put in plus six one, the Australia dial code, and the zero. You don't need to do both, right? You either plus six one four one nine or zero four one nine. The other way, it, it, when people hit dial, it'll say no such number. So, um, so make sure you read it. A lot of people, the other common mistake is they put a full stop at the end of their website. That can cause a bit of an error in certain browser searches because they put dot com dot au dot. Right? No dot required. It's just typing a full stop. So just go through and make sure that there's no typos in there, there's no spelling mistakes, the pictures look nice, and the logo actually isn't too big. It actually fits and shows your, your logo correctly. So it's an incredibly easy thing to get started on. Do the basics. When you get stuck, ask for help. Come and visit us in the office in, uh, in the market. We're there regularly a couple of times a week, or call and get an appointment. Okay, so pictures. Again, another topic we've always banged on about, right? Um, I didn't know this till today. And when we were chatting, Madeline said, have you ever watched the uh, video from Momentum Digital on how to tag up uh, pictures for my Google business? And the answer was, no, I didn't. I know I haven't. It's absolutely fantastic. If you want to get your pictures ready and pictures tell a thousand words and they're a key motivation for clients to kick on and click on, Watch this short video. It's three minutes, well, not three minutes, six minutes, 28 looking at it. Um, the link works and it just tells you what you need to do to get the most out of your images on Google My Business. And so, it also, with, the, with that, it shows you how to upload from a desktop but also the smartphone. And right. um, we, we do get um, people stuck on how to do this. 
and how to add a tag. So, you know, having a, a look through and I, and I thought this one was very appropriate. Yeah, thanks, Madeline. Yeah, it, it's great. So I'm about to use it with my client, who I'm going to talk about uh, later on, because this is a project that we've got to do together. So um, it was great for me to, 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 to get this video. There's so much information out there. You can never be an expert. You can only be where you are at the time. So just you've always just got to do your best. I've never heard of it, and it's a great asset. So when you go to Google My Business, if you've got an account, right, there is a fantastic help center available, right? And uh, manage my profile directly on Google. I've actually spent a bit of time in this over the last uh, week or so trying to fix a couple of bugs and uh, help one of my clients. And the how to edit your profile section down the right hand side is really usable. And so I'd encourage you just to spend time. And I did when I was trying to do this presentation, start taking screenshots, but it got incredibly boring because it was just screenshot after screenshot, whereas you can just come on here and actually read it. All right? So it's the Google Business Profile Help. And if you've got a specific issue, you can use the help desk down the side here. Otherwise, just reading down through the site is incredibly useful and informative, and it does help you with your maps. So I would... It's not one of those cases where you're going to find yourself lost and uh, you know and, and frustrated. The content is really good. So um, when you actually log in, and I put this up, the, for some reason the text is incredibly small, right? But what it does give you is a whole list of things down the left hand side that you can actually edit, right? And there is no section of that that you don't need to go to except ads if you don't have ads right so everything else you can do right and just follow it all and make sure you add something for every term and when you go to a section it's got if you look over here it's got the little pen mark and that means it's editable yep so if you want to add a photo you can click add a photo and you can update it. If you want to add an opening date, it's always good to have an opening date for market traders because many market traders have been trading for 10, 20 and 30 years, right? If you look at customers now in their 30s, they think 2000 was, you know, a lifetime ago, right? Because they were at primary school when that when your when your business started, right? So if you started your business in 2010 and you're selling to people who are age 30, it seems like a really long time ago, but some market traders have been there since 1974. Right, so put in an opening date. It has, it makes you seem credible, and it makes a long-lived business is a proxy for trustworthy business. So put an opening date in there. We haven't got one in the one that I'm looking at right now, so it's a job to do. So it's easy to work through. You just got to spend time doing it, right? And work your way down that list: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sections, and a little bit. Read one or two of those if you need to, but really that's just about tagging on your ad campaign if you want it. So um, I've been working with a physiotherapist and uh, one of the things that in that list was categories of business, right? And things that you do. And what we've been doing is breaking down his business to try and get more results so that when people search on the internet, he turns up in more, in his business listing turns up under more um, more more categories, right? And I had a lot of trouble trying to get out of him what he actually did. He goes, oh, I'm just a physio, you know, just like I do stuff that physio does, right? And we broke it down into what the key segments of his activity, muscle skeletal conditions, neck pain, back pain, sports injuries, ACLs, right? And he was like, yeah, yeah, because he's normalized all of that and he doesn't realize that uh, people searching for businesses to cure back and neck pain. They're not necessarily searching for a physio, but that's where they end up. So we're trying to break out all of the things that he does in his business. And then we're going to try it and work out whether they're a service or a category. So in his practice, he works with the nutritionalist, which is a category, right? And he also works with the sports psychologist, which is a category. So we're going to load all the categories in there to, to best advantage his business and then all the services that each one does, right? So sometimes for a business owner, it's really hard to break down, right? But you can't have too much detail, right? Just all the different services can be products that you offer and, uh, and just try and think about the best way to expand and reach your scope so you can turn up under more, uh, more options. 
when you're in Google uh, My Business, it'll tell you a lot of information. It's got a fantastic analytics section. So when we're looking at this particular client, we found out that most of his phone calls occurred on a Monday. And then people got busy and then on Wednesday and Thursday, they went, mm, I still haven't made that call. And all the people who hadn't made that call on Monday made their call on Wednesday and Thursday. Almost no one called on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, zip, nothing, right? So we're not, that tells us we need to really look at things in terms of when he has Google ads on Saturday and Sunday, are they effective? Are the ads on Saturday and Sunday causing the phone calls on Monday or are we wasting time and money? Right? And that's one of the things that we're going to look at next. The other thing has implications. Oops, I need to go back one slide. Ooh. The other thing that has implications for when is receptionist finished, right? Because this is when the calls came through. And a big batch of calls came through between six and seven. And she finishes at five. Okay? So actually, she was flat out at the end of the day. right? And what happens is that it might be better to try and jiggle her hours around a little bit. So the people who called didn't call after seven o'clock, right? Might be because in the past they've called and no one's there or the business listing isn't open at that particular time. But it's got an implication for him in terms of client recruitment, which is what, what do we do on our phone? What does our message say? Should we divert the phone? He could, for example, divert the phone through to the business owner and say, you know, do you want to take the extra calls? So there's really interesting information that's uh, actually in there. Oh. Photos, we're back to that old chestnut, right? One of the things I discovered with this particular client is that his photos are terrible, right? The number of times your photos have been viewed compared to other businesses in your category. See him? He's 250. Businesses like you, 5,295 times. So he's 1% compared. He's 99% off the industry standard. That's a lot, right? So that's a job that we've got to do. In terms of photo quality, he's got no customer photos. And the quality that they've got has got a score of around about 10. And his quality on his site has got a score of around about 2, 1 or 2. So it's a really handy little um, tool to give you some insights as to how you're, you're performing. And uh, it's also why I went back and put in that link that Madeline had shared to me about how to correctly tag and format your photos for Google My Business. Because you can see they do a report on it because they think it's important. Whether you think it's important or not doesn't really matter because they obviously do because they have a report on it. So... Um, it is worth taking the time to get how you look. As traders, we spend a lot of time on visual merchandising, right? This is internet visual merchandising. This is how we look and, uh, and we should take it seriously. So the other key issue, and we don't have time to cover it in too much detail today, is what to do if your map pin is not in the right place or what to do if you're not listed, right? my advice to you is come back here into the presentation open the link and follow it right it's pretty simple what you do if you've got a google my business profile already is that when you look when you're logged into gmail and you search or google and you search for your business and you look at the business profile there's an option to edit it down the bottom log in and edit it right that's it if you haven't got one, you need to get one first and then add the business as a, as, a, as a new location. But in essence, the short answer is log into your profile and, uh, and go down the bottom and edit the location. And that will then eventually change the pin on the map. It does have some small print to say that can take up to three or four days to um, actually occur. But it's a hot topic. You want to be on the right side uh, of, the, of, the, of the location map because otherwise people aren't going to find you. So what I want to do before I get to the end here is I actually want to go and show you a real site so you can see the kind of thing that I'm doing and how I'm trying to help uh, my, my client in particular. So I'm just going to escape out of the presentation for a second and I'm going to rely on Madeline to tell me whether I'm still, um, whether you can still see me or not. So, uh, I Madeline, can see it, yeah. Okay. 
So I talked about the cozy possum before and just about how the results appear. You know, the client who's searching can definitely see they're in the right zone. That's the Google Shopping results. Um, they've got all of the details again here and all of the um, all of the sort of similar products that are that are listed in, in the marketplace that are there. Uh, that's is just a screenshot of where I got went to get my um, you know to get help on Google. So you can see that it's really easy. You have to be logged in. You can see my little face up there, and um, and I can go to my business profile directly from there. You know, if I, after I've read the help, there's lots of great sections. This was the how to pick, fix a missing pin or a wrong pin location. Again, um, I think the quality of what they put out is really good. And they've also got this, which I really like, which is how to manage and improve your ranking on Google. So it's, these are all things that you can do yourself. And if you don't know how to do them or you can't do them, you can, if you read this first, you can make sure that you are paying someone to do the right job. So you're not just paying some random to say, help me improve my Google ranking. You can actually look in here and, uh, and see what they should be doing for you. So um, I've been working with, uh, with a customer and that customer has said, seen a big drop off in, in, in his acquisitions of his, uh, his particular clients, right? So we signed into his analytics and uh, we looked at his website, everything seemed to be fine on the front end. We looked at his Facebook, everything seemed to be fine on the front end. The first thing we did was test his booking form to make sure that, um, that there wasn't a bug in the booking form and uh, we ran a test. You know, so we did all the kind of basic sort of stuff. Why, you know, why, why is business tailed off a little bit? Is it the fault of the website? Is it the fault of the social media? You know, and we tested everything to make sure it wasn't um, defective or, or not running properly. And it all seemed to be working fine, right? So I logged into his, uh, my business account after a chat with him. And, uh, and again, he hadn't updated it for a very, very long time, right? And in the Google My uh, My Business account, there is some fantastic data that is available for you to 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 have a look at. Right? It tells you how many people have, have searched using your site, um, what the activity is. Um, tells you, gives you a little look at your reviews. You can gives you a quick look of your business on in search and on maps. It allows you to come in here and share that link, so you can use it like a contact card. Um, there's lots of sort of stuff that, um, that, that, that's, that, that is in here that is really useful. It's also got a shortcut on how to start creating ads, right? And it will create better quality ads if your Google profile is, uh, is, is up to date. So when I looked in here, there's a couple of alarm bells that went off, right? This one, his profile is only 70% complete. Yep. Okay. The other one was there isn't any new reviews since COVID. Well, 2021, but there isn't any new reviews that have occurred in this calendar year, and that's important. And the other thing that drew my attention was this. His map views were down by 69%, right, in the last 28 days, and his search views were down by, by, by you know, 15%. And that meant that his feeling and his appointment book was correct, right? It, there's a direct relationship between his bookings being down and the fact that his, uh, his data is down, right? The question that we had to kind of address was why, right? And what's going on? And, but we wouldn't have really been able to say for sure that the facts were correct unless we'd had access to this. Because when we looked at everything, it looked like it was working fine, but we needed to find out where the big drop off was. And this is, yes, you're 100% correct. Right, <laughs> and uh, when you look through Google, you can learn more about your business by clicking on insights, and it'll tell you. It's got some great little short reports, right? So in the last month, how did people find me? You know, how did they discover me? Branded search, discovery, or direct search, right? It tells you basically it breaks it down, right, on um, on how to do it. Oh, it's loading data. We'll have to give it a second. All right, I'll just hit the refresh screen. Just give me a second to do that. All 
Okay, right. So here we go. So let's give us a note. Say they're changing this screen as well. They're changing everything. There's no stop. What it does is it gives us information on, on the kinds of searches and, uh, and where the customer um, viewed us from. So did they view us from maps or did they look us for us on a search listing? It also tells us a bit about our customer interactions. Did they call us? Did they request directions? Did they look at the website, right? So you can see how useful the tool is to you. How many of you know how many map searches you've had, right? That is particularly important when the tourists come back so they can find us in the market, right? And this is how you measure whether it's working or not. And you can see who's requested directions, when the phone calls came in, what time they came in, and those other images that I showed you before, which was a little bit about the pictures just to support what, um, what we're looking at. But you can also see where people came from, right? So in the last month, this is where the business has come from. If we look back at the quarter, we can see business came from all over. Reservoir, Essendon, you know, Parkville, Carlton, uh, you know, Altona, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see where the business came from over that. And it lists the postcodes, right? Those postcodes are important because you can advertise in certain cases in Google via postcode. So you should advertise to all the places where you where you're getting business from. But also it tells you maybe you want to advertise in the places around there where you're not getting business from. What we did is we looked through all this data to try and get some answers, right? And the answers were pretty easy to find, right? Once we got into them. So we can see here the customer interactions, who visited the website and who'd called us and who'd requested directions. It's pretty consistent. Um, <coughs> you know, people are requesting directions and a number of calls are on the bottom. You can go into that in more detail, right? Where did the customers look at us? This was the one that told us the answer, right? What happened is the total views were 21,000, right? And you can see how it dips and flows, right? And this is just weekends, really. You know, it's a cyclical business when the search occurs. But something happened, right? And when that something happened on the 17th of June, right? Because on the 18th of June, we had 10 listings on search. Let me go back, sorry and 44 listings on maps, right, on the 19th of June. So that's 8 and 44. If we go back to the 15th of June, we had 20 listings on search and 543 on maps. So we'd crashed by 90% from our original total. And with that crash came a dry up in business. So our job that we've got now is to work out what we've got to do to get back to where we were before and the difference is it's not as necessarily his website it's not his advertising it's not his uh his um his facebook ads it's not it's not anything like that it's not pinterest i'm not pinterest it's not it's nothing to do with his instagram account he hasn't done anything bad he hasn't got any bad reviews right what's happened is he's disappeared off maps right and that means people who are searching for him aren't finding him so it was this tool allowed us to use a business intelligence to fix a problem for him, right? And he's got to get back on the top three uh, results from the maps because people are searching locally. I've got a bad back. I'm working at home again. Physiotherapist near me. So really, really, really simple solution uh, to the problem. I mean, a really, really simple way to find out what the problem was. So we're not wasting time looking in SEO, changing our ad campaigns, taking out an ad in the local newspaper. We've got a job to do, and our job to do is to get back on maps because that's where people were finding us from. Existing clients, no problem. New clients, this is where they were coming from. So the tools are incredibly useful. Right? And what I wanted to do is, rather than try and explain that to you, was actually to try and show you an example from a client who, um, you know, who, who's, who, who's been able to find a problem and address that 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 particular problem you know and uh, if you're not using your particular analytics in the same way then if you've got an issue or business is a little bit quieter you know this is somewhere where you can stop off and have a look and see if you can find out why that's happened so what we've got to do is effectively work your way through and make sure that all of the data and information under your photos, your messages, your insights, your products, your services, are all up to date. 
and that will best advantage you, your business so that when you get searched for, you can turn up like Cozy Possum right on the front page in a number one result. So uh, that's all I really wanted to cover today, just to give you a concrete reminder about why you should, uh, um, why there's a strong case for taking your Google My Business listing seriously and why there's a strong case for you um, uh, really giving it the attention to detail that it, that it, that it requires. And that is that Google has 80% of browser share and that people are looking for to find places based on location and the Vic market is a location and location mapping is important. And if you've got your services listed, the chances are you're going to get the customer. All right, Madeline, have I forgotten anything or is there anything I need to cover again or you'd like me to explain? No, I think you've covered it. Um, the questions that we get asked a lot is first of all how to set it up which you've covered uh, we've given the links on where to go for, for the resources um, the other question is about how to upload the image from the uh, mobile and we've given a link to that I think that um, and, and and I mean you know just uh, as you said earlier is uh, I find Google My Business probably the most valuable tool. We've got the biggest search engine uh, in the world and uh, it's so powerful that uh, I don't think um, people really understand the power of it and what we can do with it. And it's not only uploading the photos, but you can create posts. You can share your um, collections. Um, you can share a product as a post. You can, uh, you know, obviously it helps with, um, with your um, uh, Google Ads. And, um, it, and, and, and there are businesses who don't even have a website but use this as a full resource platform uh, to bring businesses uh, to bring people to their business and so you know I, I really um, can't qualify enough what Peter has gone through and explaining it as um, what do you say you called it a, um, a vis uh, internet visual marketing it's when you walk past the shop and it's closed, you, whether you'll go back or not depends on how does it look, right? The internet used to be text driven and it was just text results, right? And you used to look down and it was text, 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 text. Mm -hmm. Now it's image driven, right? And, and you've got a picture, you've got a map. Where are you? Who are you? What do you look like, mm -hmm. right? What do you look like is, mm, do we have the right products and is that what I'm interested in? But also, would I come to a store that looked like you? Yeah. Now, when you put a picture up, you better look like that picture when it comes back, right? Because it's kind of like internet dating for business, right? Yeah. So, I that. so, so you know, don't have some kind of special judged up number. Make it authentic, right? Because if they walk past you because you don't look anything like that, it, it, your store doesn't look like anything it appears like on the internet, then you've got a mismatch in expectations and the client's alarm will go off. Oh, look to a million dollars on the internet. It's looking 75 cents in real life. So, so try and make your pictures authentic is the most important thing. Not good, not photographically fantastic, not Instagram worthy, authentic is what you really want. But yeah, it is, it's your visual merchandising, you know? In the old days, you had signage above the shop window, in the shop window, in the local newspaper, in the local directory, and then you had your actual window and your merchandising within the store. This is all part of the same, everything on the internet is old, right? Nothing new has been invented by the internet. This is just visual merchandising, you know? That's, 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 um, you know, that, that, that's all That's all it is from the old school. That's great. Thank you. Well, that's it for today's session. Uh, thanks again, Peter, for the valuable insights you bring to the table every time we have one of these sessions. Uh, and as Peter said earlier, if you do need uh, further assistance, uh, get in touch with me and uh, we'll see how we can help you. Thanks, Peter, and can't wait for the next session.
Right, well, there's, uh, I reckon there's a lot of homework to be done by between now and the next session if you follow all those links. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye for now. Nice to see you. Bye-bye.